What was it like coming up in the South during that era? Did you have a sense of, uh, of the changes that were taking place and, and how did they affect your life as a young man in Mississippi? Well, I had a sense of it, but you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, uh, not seeing the forest for the trees, kind of a syndrome, you know, you, you're right there in it. And so you don't have a real full appreciation about what's going on until you are able to get out of it in time and environment and then look back upon it, you know. Um, I grew up in a segregated uh, society. Um, I was in the first wave of, of, of children that integrated the schools in Mississippi. Um, I didn't go to school with, with white kids until I was 10th grade. So from first through ninth grade, I went to um, segregated school. Um, I marched as a child to integrated schools. You know? Yeah, see, I, rem I remember very vividly um, the Civil Rights Movement and the Freedom Riders and all of that that came through Mississippi, SNCC and CORE and all, those, all, those, all these different uh, um, organizations and uh, uh, the campaigns for uh, the right to vote and all of that. I mean, I wasn't old enough to, to vote, but I remember all of that. Yeah. And uh, I can, I have a vivid uh, image in my in my mind of the big CBS cameras with the big uh, reels on top of the camera, you know. And, um, all of that, you know. Uh, but uh, what's interesting about that period is that our parents who lived under those kind of conditions never taught us to hate. And in some way, in some remarkable ways, protected us um, emotionally and physically from from the damage that could occur you know and so um, we were taught you know to, to stay in your place that's that was for your protection don't be on the wrong side of town and you know this and don't, don't be anywhere that you're not supposed to be and um, get your education and um, I think at the time many of our parents and grandparents were really not that that hopeful about integration I don't think they saw uh, saw the possibility of it coming in their lifetime although it did happen but they were hopeful about somehow about you getting an education and this succeeding in life um, that was important to them. And um, it was important that, that, that a young child would grow up and, and uh, cultivate some kind of uh, integrity. You know, and that whole King movement, Martin Luther King, and you know, that, that was the focus, you know, that, that uh, you grow up uh, and maintain some kind of integrity about yourself as as a, as a, a black man or black woman, and um, I think I still carry those values. You know, um, when, you know, I, I saw all the marches and demonstrations, and uh, I remember the for colored signs and all, all of that kind of stuff, vividly. And the final question is, um, at this point in your life, after what you've seen in your lifetime personally and with the world, are you optimistic about the future of mankind? Or do you think we're gonna blow, or we're on our way to blow <laughs> ourselves up? I am optimistic. Uh, 
even though you know when you, when you look at it squarely it it seems uh, terribly doubtful that that we're going to save ourselves but um I do believe in the basic goodness of man and of mankind. And although we seem to be going through a horrific phase in, in, uh, um, in this historical phase of uh, humanity, um, I think there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And I think uh, what we're doing as artists and creative people you know, um, well, even, you know, what you're doing is being a part of this whole thing. Um, I think all of that is going to have a f an effect eventually. Or, or now, as subtle as that effect may be, that, that, uh, that will help influence the overall good of, of, of men. And uh, I'm, I'm optimistic. Yes, I am.